Hi and welcome to Old School Blues Guitar. This is a redo of an earlier lesson that I did on some of the classic licks of T-Bone Walker and some things that I've learned from listening to his music. I did a, a video a long time ago and the quality was a little shaky and there were some editing mistakes so this is a, a new take with some additional teaching put into it. And what I'm going to do is just go through and point out some things about T-Bone Walker's style that I've picked up on and learned and I don't claim to be any kind of expert on his playing but th these are the things that I've learned from listening to him and things that I've noticed about his playing. We're going to start out and I've got about a dozen different ideas and, and some extra things I'm going to throw in along the way. We're going to start out with the chords. You listen to T-Bone Walker, he was one of the first really great electric blues guitar players, one of the first blues players to play amplified and he pioneered especially a lot of the single string runs that you hear and, and everything that's come since him. But he also had a, a kind of a unique way of playing the chords behind his singing and even as part of solos and things like that. Basically he used a lot of ninth chords. I'm going to start out just showing you some things. We'll use the key of G as a reference to get started and we'll move to B flat and some other keys as we go through this. So in G, my G ninth chord if the song's in G, the one is going to be a, a ninth. And so for a G ninth, I've got my first finger on the second fret of the fifth string. My second finger is on the second fret of the third string. My ring finger is on the third fret of the fourth string. And my pinky is on the third fret of the second string. And that is a position he'll move all over the place and use in different kinds of ways. That's one chord. Another chord that he uses is a second position ninth chord. That first one was a first position ninth chord. So a second position ninth chord. If the song's in G, it's going to go to C for the four. So this is the C ninth chord. I've got my first finger on the second fret of the fourth string. My second finger on the third fret of the fifth string. And my ring finger is flattened out at the third fret, covering the first, second, and third strings. That's what you get there. And then he's going to use that same shape for the 5, which is a D ninth. So in many T-Bone Walker songs, he's just using those three chord shapes the whole way through. he doesn't just play those. Usually he slides in to them from above or below and he does some cool little licks with them. So a typical T-Bone Walker slow tune in the key of G. I'm just going to kind of walk through it. I'll try to time it out the best I can and show you, you know, how he used, one example of how he uses those chords. T-Bone Walker always plays like single string runs in between the chords. I tried to play through a whole progression just using the chords, which he doesn't do very often unless he's playing behind, you know, a piano solo or a horn solo or something like that. Just some of the things that I did that in the first position, that little slide like this. taking the G9, and then I'm going to pick the 5th string and the 4th string, just keeping that chord shape, and then I'm going to move it to what is an A flat ninth. just take that whole chord shape, move it up, 1 fret, and then back. And he 
does this quick little slide. And I don't know how he does this. I don't know if he moves his whole pinky to the third fret of the first string or if he just kind of flattens it out. I have no idea. But he does something where he gets that note. So he does this. come from above or you could come from below like that either way now when he gets to the five sometimes he'll just play the chord like this so I'm going from a E flat ninth second position ninth chord where my second finger is getting the E flat, which is the sixth fret of the fifth string. Other times you hear him do this lick, which is really cool. And he kind of starts this ahead of the, anticipates the beat when he does this. And what I hear is you got the ninth chord shape, but then you're taking your second finger, instead of being on the fifth string, you're going to put it on the sixth string. So if we're going into a D ninth, we're going to take it, start it from here, E flat ninth, and he's going to pick the sixth string, fourth string, and third string, and sometimes get some both, and then to the to the, the D ninth, so something like this. Sometimes he goes back to that instead of going to the four. Three. And then back into the to the progression. So to a bunch of T-Bone Walker songs like Cold Cold Feeling, Love is a Gamble, any of those, you'll hear this kind of thing. Any, pretty much anything he does in any key, he's using those chords in some way. I can't think of any other chord tricks that he uses. He does use an augmented chord every now and then and some different chords. I'm going to show you those when we get to the end tags part of this. So part one, the first idea from T-Bone Walker's playing is his use of ninth chords. And you got a first position ninth, which is typically used for the one. And then you have a second position ninth, which is used for the four and the five. And then you've got some slides with the one. You've got something like this. With the four, you can slide into it. When you get to the five, you can walk into it like that with the bass, or just use the straight chord like that. So there is the first part of this lesson, and we'll be back with lick number two, idea number two here in just a minute. Hi, and welcome back to Old School Blues Guitar. We are going through some of the classic licks from the playing of T-Bone Walker. And in the first lesson, we looked at his use of ninth chords, and now we're going to start getting into some of the single string ideas. We're going to play in the key of B flat for a little bit, which is a key that he used quite a bit. And we're going to start out, our second idea is going to be what I call the T-Bone Walker kind of just bare bones signature lick. And in almost all his songs he's going to use this lick or some variation of it at one point or another. I'll play it for you one time and then we'll talk about it. One more time. So what I'm doing, I'm in the first position blues box, and T-Bone Walker, most of his stuff is in the first position blues box, B flat, and I'm going to put my third finger, my ring finger, on the third string at the eighth fret, and then my second finger is going to be on the seventh fret of the third string. My first finger is going to anchor the sixth fret at the first with the first and second strings, both being both being touched. And he bends up 
just slightly on the third string and then goes to the second and the first string. That's the first part of the lick. And you, you hear that right there and you think T-Bone Walker. He's going to go to the ninth fret and sixth fret of the second string. That's the really the, the bare bones of the bare bones lick. Right there. And then after that he does all kinds of different stuff in his songs. And my example went like this. And the band. We're going to talk about bends in a little bit, but he's bending on the eighth fret of the third string. And I'm using all three fingers. I call these three finger bends on the my ring fingers on the eighth fret, my second fingers on the seventh fret, my first fingers on the sixth fret. But I'm really bending the eighth fret note. And I just bend it up three times. And you can vary how you let it go, how long you sustain it for, you can do all kinds of different stuff. So the whole thing, one more time. Whoops, I did it wrong. Let me do the original. That's what I did. Now the variation. Sometimes he does that. Sometimes he does all kinds of stuff, but all those variations center around this, that little lick. Now, I don't know if he's sliding when he does that. That's a possibility. He played with really heavy strings and it's tough to bend those, but I think from what I've seen of the videos of him like in the 60s and you know, before he died, it looks like he just bent up on that. I don't know. Sometimes he'll do a little rake where he'll just kind of drag the pick across it. All kinds of variations on that. But that lick, that is at the heart of all his playing. And you hear this in the playing of other electric blues guys. Buddy Guy, Lil Folsom, Pee Wee Creighton, pretty much any electric blues guitar player. You know, you can hear some T-Bone Walker in there, and you hear those licks in there. So, that is our second idea. I call that the, just the bare bones T-Bone Walker lick in B-flat. And we'll come back with idea number three here in just a minute. All right. And for the third T-Bone Walker idea or lick, I'm just going to show you some variations in what he plays in the first position blues box. And I'm going to do it by teaching some individual licks and also some little and the sequences that he uses quite a bit. I'm going to start out with what I call hops. And this is a lick that you hear. This is pretty much his signature lick. And in B flat, we're going to stay in that key. Go something like this. That part's neat, but this part. That's the signature T-Bone Walker. I call it a hop because it sounds like he's hopping. Just my way of remembering that. So if I'm in B flat, what I'm doing is starting my third finger on the eighth fret of the third string, and I'm sliding it to the tenth fret of the third string. And then get coming back with my first finger to the sixth fret of the second string. Some guys do it like this which you can do, and I bet T-Bone Walker did that sometimes. But from what I understand, playing with the heavier strings, it was harder to get that bend. So, so he does the slide. And he'll use that lick a lot to lead into some of his single string stuff. That's a typical little T-Bone Walker lick there. So the hops, that's like an essential T-Bone Walker thing. Chuck Berry later, if you hear Chuck Berry's rock and roll stuff and other guys just pretty much took that and added another string, double strings, and, and used those quite a bit. So that is the third T-Bone Walker idea, the hops. And I'm using just the second and third string. There you go. A guitar for the fourth T-Bone Walker idea. We're going to talk about bends a little bit. And there were two bends that you hear in his playing quite a bit. One is the third string. The other one is the second string. And 
so let's start with the third string. This is your stereotypical, typical blues band. And he used this in a lot of different ways. And we talked about this a little bit with the last leg, but he's bending up with three fingers. I call it a three finger band. At least I think that's how he did it. And I showed you this position already. And he does a lot of variations with this band. So he might just stay on the third and fourth string. Something like that. Or he might do something like this. Lots of little different variations in the picking pattern, but all centered around that band. Now sometimes he'll add a note, he'll bend, and then get the first fret, first, I'm sorry, first string at the sixth fret, if we're in B flat. Sometimes he'll kind of almost do a double stop on the first and second strings, sixth fret. But that bend, you hear, if you listen to T-Bone Walker, he's doing that bend in that third string quite a bit. The other bend that I hear him use a lot is on the second string. So bending, doing the same basic bend, but just moving it over to the second string. So lots of different songs, you'll hear him go to the second string. He doesn't bend like that blues band. Tebow Walker doesn't use that. And again, I think it's because of the heavy strings that he used. He just couldn't, can't do that all out bend, that typical blues band. Every now and then, he'll bend on the first string at the eighth fret. So from B flat. So sometimes he'll go to that first string as well. So any kind of three-fingered bend on the first string, second string, third string, you hear T-Bone Walker do those in his playing, and that's an essential part of his playing. One lick that he does with the band that I think is kind of unique is he'll do something like this, where he'll bend, so I'm bending the second string, and then getting the first fret of the sixth string, and then the sixth fret of the second string, and then into the third and fourth strings. So something like that. I hear T-Bone Walker use that lick or variations of it quite a bit. So those are some basic T-Bone Walker bends and if you're going to play his style those are a couple ingredients that you need to have, have down. Be back with the fifth part of this lesson in just a minute. We're going through some of the signature licks of the great T-Bone Walker and we're talking about some first, uh, first position blues box licks right now that he used quite a bit and we've gone through some bends and some what else we've gone through some hops and now we're going to take a look I don't know what they call these I just call them a kind of a T-bone walker type thing a lot of the songs he'll do this like if we're in B flat where he'll he'll go from the ninth fret of the first string to the sixth fret of the first string and then the sixth fret of the second string. Like that. And he can do it in all kinds of different ways. Slow and lead into the other things, or in some solos he's just playing. And uses that as part of a solo or even sometimes as a fill. So I'm just keeping my first finger on the 6th fret, getting the 1st and 2nd string. And my pinky, I'm getting the ninth fret of the 1st string. And it's 1st string, 2nd string. So it, if I picked it like that, but he's doing it like that. Sometimes I think I hear him go to the 2nd string like this. Some guys do that, but I think most of the time T-Bone Walker is just going. And working into whatever he's playing. So that's a lick.
along with the hop and the band. Those are all T-Bone Walker type things. So that's the next lick, number six, right? And we're getting ready to move on to number seven. Guitar, it's time for idea number six. I think we're on, unless I got mixed, messed up, which I may have. But this is another T-Bone Walker idea that I really like. And I'm going to take it in the key of G. And there's a tune called Cold Cold Feeling, which is one of my all-time favorites. And he's, he does this in a couple other tunes. And it's kind of a bass, a bassy lick. And he does something like this. And he might even do something like this with it. And just really kind of a cool thing. And he'll start it with that little lick. If you're familiar at all with Billy Butler's playing or some other... Charlie Christian even, some jazzier players, they'll do this thing on the third string, the four and G, where they're going from the third to the fifth to the sixth fret. And that's what he's, really what the heart of this is. So he starts out. I'm starting on the fifth fret of the fourth string, to the third fret of the third string, and then sliding from the fifth fret to the sixth fret of the third string. Like that. So just look at the tab for this one. See if you can get that down. idea that I've picked up from, from listening to T Bone Walker. And he does it in G, I've heard him do it in A, B flat, even C, different keys as he plays. So that is lick number seven. I'll be back with number eight here in just a minute. Blues guitar. We're going through some different T Bone Walker ideas here. I think we're on number seven. I've got these numbered, but I don't know what it means. Just I think I lost track. My my cheat sheet over here is kind of messed up. I think we're on seven and it's time to take a look at some a double stop lick. T-Bone Walker didn't use a whole lot of, of double stops. And if we're in the key of, of G, which we'll stay in, one that he did use was this one. And he didn't use it a ton, but he did use it sometimes. And so if we're in the key of G, I'm on the second and third strings. I've got my, I'm using my second and third fingers. My second finger is on the sixth fret of the second string. It's really a G7 double stop. My ring finger is on the 7th fret of the 3rd string. And you can slide into it from below. I've heard T-Bone Walker, and the way I use it sometimes, if I'm playing a slow tune in G, he'll start off a solo or do something like this. Typical electric blues double stop. That's one you hear T-Bone Walker use. 
another double stop while we're there, sometimes he'll use this where he does this and he'll bend. Got my pinky on the sixth fret of the first string and my ring finger on the fifth fret of the second string. And I'm putting my first finger on the third fret, first and second strings to kind of hold everything together. And that lick you'll hear T-Bone Walker use sometimes. A lot of times instead of that, you'll hear him use this diminished chord lick and we're going to talk about that next. So in the double stop department, two that I've picked up from T-Bone Walker, that one. So if you're in the first position, blues box and G, this is your G. And just go one, two, three fret, G7. So G, G7. And that G7 double stop is one if he's playing in G he'll use. If he's in B flat, here's B flat. One, two, three. something you might hear him use as well. So that, I'm going to count these, three, four, five, six, is the seventh idea. And I'll be back with number eight here in just a minute. Back to old school blues guitar, we're plowing through some great T-Bone Walker stuff, some of the simple signature licks from his playing, the real basic stuff that he uses over and over again. And we're going to go back to the key of B flat, and I'm going to show you a diminished lick. It's a basically a diminished chord that he uses something like this. That's a really cool thing. I used to think he did this. But you can hear the difference. That's two strings versus four strings. It's so much more full and, and cool. So what I'm doing, if you don't know your diminished chord, here's a B flat, first position bar chord. And you find the B flat, which is on the fourth string at the eighth fret. That's our, our root. So here's B flat. Flat, and we're going to go to that third or fourth string and start it. So my first finger goes on the eighth fret of the fourth string. My second finger goes on the eighth fret of the second string. My ring finger on the ninth fret of the third string. And my pinky on the ninth fret of the first string. That's what you should get. And when he plays it, it sounds like he's bending it up. So I'm going to strum it. Here how I bend it. A lot of times he'll use that in conjunction with his single string round. So this is from a tune that's called Strolling with Bones. It's an instrumental. In fact, I'm going to do a lesson on this today. And he'll lead into a lick, something like that. So this lick, he can use it as an introduction. He uses it as an end tag, and he uses it as a fill and also in a many of his solos. So the diminished chord, here's the first position blues box, find your one root, and make your chord. So if we're in G, that's my G, there's my G diminished lick. And that is real essential T-Bone Walker stuff. So that is number eight. I will be back with number nine. Welcome back to Old School Blues Guitar, and for the ninth idea from T-Bone Walker's plan, we're going to look at some of his introductions, and one in particular from the tune Love is a Gamble. It's in the key of G, and it goes like this. I'll play it for you one time. Basically, he's using the second position ninth chord, starting with the G ninth, and he's going to strum it, and then pick back up first, second, third, and fourth string. So I'm starting with the second position G ninth. My second finger is on the G tenth fret of the fifth string. You've got that shade. You just hold it when you do the picking. And we're going to move it one, two frets to an F ninth. And then two more frets to a, this would be an E flat ninth, to a D, so that 
that whole first part, it's G, G ninth, F ninth, E or, uh, yeah, E flat ninth, and D. And then when it comes around the second time, it's like this. Going to a thirteenth chord. And a thirteenth, you just make it with the second position, ninth chord, and then put your pinky two frets up. So with the G ninth, to make it a thirteenth, we're going to use our pinky on the first string at the twelfth fret. And what he does is after he gets to this, he comes back with a slide. So he's going to slide, and then right to that thirteenth. He's going to do the same progression. the 5 or the D9 and then the slow the slow slide into the 1 which is the first position G9 chord so that is a classic T-Bone Walker intro and that's one of the things I really enjoy about his playing are his introductions and his end tags which we'll talk about next so he does that in Love is a Gamble there's some other tunes where he skips the second time through and just does something like this it goes right into the into the tune. Another chord that he uses sometimes along with this kind of thing is an augmented chord. He might do something like this. one and I'll have this on the tab. I've got my third finger on the D which is the fifth fret of the fifth string. My second finger is on the fourth fret of the fourth string. And then my first finger is getting the third fret of both the third and second string. So I don't get the first string. That's where the chord ends. Some other blues guys use that as well. So the whole thing, this is the variation on the intro. And that's another idea from his introductions that I that I really like. And he'll do all kinds of variations with those same basic licks. If you remember the diminished chord, you could do something like this. sorts of, of stuff. So if you listen to his introductions, a lot of times he'll use those chords, double stops, licks, like this diminished lick. There's some really neat ideas with those. Listen to Love is a Gamble. That's the one I think of right away. He has a couple others, like he'll use the B flat. He'll use that 13th chord, something like this. A lot of different things you can do with just those few neat ideas. So that is our ninth T-Bone Walker idea. We'll come back and close out the lesson with a quick look at a couple of his end tags. So blues guitar, we are going to wrap up the T-Bone Walker Classic Licks video here. This is a redo of a, one of my first Classic Licks videos. Hopefully the camera stuff is better and the quality, the audio and the teaching and everything. The sound of the guitar is all better than what it was. And we're going to wrap up with a look at a couple of T-Bone Walker's end tag ideas. And when he came to the end of a song, T-Bone Walker had some kind of cool, creative, and yet simple ideas that he would use to wrap it up. I'm going to do a typical T-Bone Walker end tag here. This isn't from any particular song. It's going to be in the key of B-flat. I'll show you this, and then I'll show you a couple of variations on it. So let's take it from the five of the song. really fun to play. 
And what I'm doing is I'm coming out of the five. And he's going to repeat the slide. just doing that diminished chord bend. So I've got the diminished shape. If you've gone through the rest of these lessons, you know this. So it's one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And that last one, he just kind of chokes it off. And then the ninth chord, he's going to go from a B9 to a B flat 9. He'll do the, the rumble in there, the quick picking. Sometimes he'll just end it like this. And again, you can, you're free to be creative and use this however you want to use it. So that is a, just a typical T-Bone Walker kind of end tag with this. You can do that where I go from the C9 to the B9 to the B flat 9. Or you could just go from the B9 to the B flat 9. Those are a couple little variations on it. So, as we wrap this up, those are 10 kind of ideas from T-Bone Walker's playing that I have borrowed and use all the time. If I'm playing electric blues, and especially on, on slower tunes in that kind of style. There are all kinds of other things that T-Bone Walker did, and for those, listen to his specific songs. I've got a few lessons on some individual T-Bone Walker licks and specific end tags and intros and all sorts of things. And I'm getting ready to do a, a lesson on T-Bone Walker's instrumental tune, Strolling with Bones. And that's loaded with some great T-Bone Walker ideas. So you can use these lessons, any individual idea from this lesson or any of the others. And if you want to get into T-Bone Walker's playing, I think those are some of the, the things you need to, to get good at. Hope you enjoyed this lesson. I hope it's better than the first one. If you have any questions, comments, let me know. And I will be back again in late June with a new Classic Licks lesson. Not sure who we're going to do this time, but it'll be somebody cool. I will see you then.